Um, with regard to the question about other countries building renewable or alternative energy technologies cheaper than us, that's, that's most likely correct. Um, what's really missing in the equation there is that m much of the design, the software of how those uh, alternative uh, energy technologies work ha do source from the United States. Uh, there's an awful lot of work being done here at Stanford all across the country on looking at how to increase the efficiency of photon capture for photovoltaic or how to improve the efficiency of wind turbines and so forth. Um, when it comes to actually manufacturing the panels themselves or manufacturing the turbines, it's true, for example, China does produce a lot cheaper. Uh, PV panels this year have dropped in price by 60% because of Chinese oversupply. Uh, but that's only a small part of that entire chain of getting from, uh, you know, a different source of energy and putting it into a form that we can use. Um, I think it's very important that the U.S. maintain the capability of building these uh, kind of technologies, although we have to be realistic that virtually every advanced technology that we're looking at for next generation fuels or uh, new types of solar-based technologies contain materials that the U.S. doesn't produce. Um, and in, in such a, you know, for example, uh, permanent magnets that are used in wind turbines to generate the electricity when the wind blows uh, uses a rare earth called neodymium. And 100% of that's produced in China. Uh, thin film solar, which is promises to be a cheaper next generation uh, mass production solar technology to replace silicon panels invented here, uh, relies on indium. And indium is another rare earth, 100% of which is produced in China. So we're actually in a position that even with domestic production capacity, uh, we're still relying on these raw materials. In the past, it was crude oil from the Middle East. In the future, it may be indium from China or lithium for batteries from Bolivia uh, that the U.S. itself isn't producing. And so um, it, it really highlights the point that, you know, energy independence is kind of a, uh, you know, it's a, it's a pipe dream in that sense, in, in that we are looking to moving towards an energy system that is based upon materials that are not particularly abundant. Um, so what does that mean to a, a locality? Uh, I, I think when it comes to energy resilience, uh, first it's, it's not a well-defined term uh, in that regard. Uh, one way you might look at it is that um, during periods of energy shock or energy shortages that communities have alternatives to turn to that would help mitigate the impact uh, of these situations. But number one there is not alternative energy or new energy or renewable energy. Number one is efficiency and conservation. Uh, it's by far the cheapest thing to implement. Uh, everyone can do it. Um, and it's not just a matter, you know, and I, I do like to make this distinction between efficiency and conservation. Uh, we tend to only promote efficiency as that alone will reduce energy consumption, which it doesn't. Uh, but conservation, which is actually doing without an energy service, not just getting more services out of less energy, but actually doing without an energy service is going to be critical as well. All these you know, new you know, future energy systems that would become more intermittent based, be it solar or wind or micro hydro or biofuels um, are not you know, are not going to be available in the, in the manner that we have become accustomed to with fossil fuels. Um, our society, in fact, most developed societies, have an expectation that demand for energy, um, that supply of energy will follow whatever the demand is. If, if total demand goes up, more supply will be produced. We're facing a future where I think resilience really has to incorporate this idea that demand is also going to have to follow supply. We can't keep an expectation that supply can always follow demand. And that's a behavior change. And it's a perception change and it's an expectation change. So, you know, energy resilience is not a technology issue. It's a cultural, social, and behavior issue.